Hey guys, Tom here. Today I am going to update a project I did a while ago. Uh, being it's coming up on Flag Day, I figured it would be a good time to do it. And that is I am going to take care of and try to improve on that. So the flagpole has been a really cool thing. Uh, we get, it's, it's, it's been phenomenal because we get really high winds up here and that thing has stood the test of time. I guess it's been a few years already, but the one thing I've never been happy with, and that's the light. I don't know if you know, but flag etiquette says if you're flying your flag 24 hours, which we do, you have to have a dedicated light illuminating flag. I've tried everything. I have, I've had these solar lights pointing up. They worked okay. Um, I have a good post light, but that doesn't, that's not a dedicated light for the flag. Right now I have a solar light on top. It does okay. But what I'm gonna try today is this. This is the Vaunt solar light for flag poles. It says ultra bright, 26 ultra bright LED lights. And this is a really cool light. What it does, it sits right on top of your flagpole. And these are the LED panels. It sits like that and then it charges and it has these LED lights that aren't charged <laughs> that shine down and illuminate your flag. The installation on this is really easy. If you have a manufactured flagpole, like a commercial flagpole, all you do is you take the finial off, you pop this through right through the spindle, you put the finial back on, and you're in business. I don't have a manufactured flagpole. I have a homemade flagpole, so I gotta do it the Homecraft Chronicles way. So let's get started. So the first thing I have to do and this is very important to me anyway, and that is respectfully take down the flag and store the flag while you're doing the work on the pole. I mean, sadly, in my opinion, a lot of people would just get the flag, ball it up, and throw it to the side. Technically, you see I throw it over my shoulder. You're not even really supposed to let a flag touch the ground, but that's all in flag etiquette like I said in the opener, and there'll be a link if you're interested in flag etiquette, you can check it out, all the do's and don'ts of how to display a flag, how to, um, how to you know, respect for the flag, and all that jazz, you can check it out if you're interested in something like that. So next, um, after we corral this flagpole, I have to take the old, my old little solar light ball off, and it was actually, I mean, it worked all right, but it was, I think it was more decorative than actual um, functional for lighting the flag. And I had it in there just with some caulk and some adhesive. It wasn't in there that, that uh, firmly. So all I had to do was just get a utility blade and cut the seal. And it, it really came out pretty easily, to be honest with you. Oh, there was one screw. There was a long metal tube because this is like a garden stake, actually. And it was kind of a little bit sloppy in the pipe. So I had to drive a screw through there to just keep it in, in place. It was a, one screw and a little bit of adhesive, but it worked fine. So you, you just, it was a little aluminum stake that came right out. And then I just cleaned it up a little bit, get the old caulk off there. And the funny thing is, uh, you'll see how the topper that I made for the light. All it was was a PVC fitting and it was the same size, pipe is pipe, so the PVC fitting fit right over the galvanized pipe. What I did have to do, however, as you can see in my light, the hole in the light is a little big because of, the, of what it has to clear on a commercial flagpole. So I just picked up a little plastic furl to fill the gap between the, the carriage bolt and 
the and the pipe just so it wouldn't wiggle around. It would be a nice firm fit. And then it was simply two fittings. A plug, which I drilled a hole right through the center for the carriage bolt. Put the carriage bolt in and then just locked it in with a washer, a lock washer and a nut. Tightened it up and it's not going anywhere. And then the next part was this, a sleeve, just a uh, coupling, PVC coupling sleeve. Now, I suppose if you wanted to, you could just use a cap. But the reason I, I went with the coupling and the plug was because the plug is flat, whereas a cap is going to be a little domed on top. I just think I'd get a little bit more snug of a fit with the flat surface as opposed to the rounded surface. Although with the nut and the washers, I, th I think you probably would have been all right either way and you would have saved yourself a step that I had to do of gluing it up. And another thing that I think the, the plug is a little easier than the cap is the plug, at least the plug I had, you can see it has those um, straight sides. So it made finding the center a lot easier. All I had to do was connect a couple of the corners, opposite corners, and that gave me a center mark. I don't know if you saw those lines earlier when I was drilling. And then I just glued the two pieces together. Now, this may be a little finicky, why I'm using a paintbrush as opposed to the applicator in the glue. And that's only because th this is not a watertight fitting. I'm just holding them together. I don't need a whole ton of glue. And the little sponge applicator that comes in the can of PVC cement can tend to get a little sloppy. And I didn't really want a lot of uh, overflow coming out that I'd have to clean up later. And then I just painted it with the same hammered paint that I painted the whole flagpole with. Now, I don't know if you've ever used this hammered paint before, but the key to this hammered paint, and I go into this a little more detail in my front door video, which I'll give you a link to if you're interested, is you can't mess with it. You kind of have to put it on, spread it out, and leave it alone because that's what gives it the hammered effect. It goes on and it kind of it's almost like self-leveling. It gives you, it gets its own little smoothness and then the, the, the hammered effect kind of takes place. And if you go back and you brush over stuff a lot of times with this hammered paint, it kind of messes up that whole process of, of the paint. It's kind of like magic paint. It just, I don't know what's in it, how it works, how it works, but that's what we painted the pole with. So that's what we painted on top. And I'm not painting the top because I don't need to. Basically, that's going to be covered by the light. So why waste the paint? And then, you, you, you know, you could get some rub off transfer on the light itself, which maybe could look sloppy down the way. But that's it. And then I just let it go. Oh, yeah. I had to do that bottom edge there because that actually shows. And then I just let that dry. I threw it in a clamp just to let it dry. And then we are ready to install. So this was really easy. I mean, it was... I sanded the old caulk off and no glue, no fasteners, no adhesives of any kind. It's just a friction fit. I mean, you, obviously you can tell by me having to hammer it on here. It was a little bit of a snug fit. There's probably a better way I could have done that maybe with uh, a board or something so I could drive it a little better. But, that, you know, just take your time. Do a little bit around the edges of each time. I I didn't want to hit it too hard because I was worried that if I hit it too hard, I'd, I'd break the fitting. But 
it it it's on there snug. It's not coming off. And then I just put on my little plastic furl. The light, make sure you put the solar panels facing the sky. Very important or your light won't light and you'll be lighting the sky. And then I put a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. Now I thought about putting a little bit of Loctite thread lock on here, but then I decided against it just in case for whatever reason I wanted to take it off. I wouldn't have to worry about getting the lock, thread lock off of there. And then I just peel off the little plastic protecting films from the solar panels. And that's all there is to it. This, I mean, this was almost as simple as just unscrewing the finial on a commercial flagpole and, and putting the light on itself. It worked out really well. It was actually a lot simpler than I thought it would be. And then it's just a matter of re-affixing the flag, putting it back in its pole, in its little homemade flagpole holder, and wait for dark to see how it works. So there you go guys, the Vont Solar Light for Flagpoles, 26 ultra bright LED light bulbs. Even for my homemade rig, I think it went on pretty easy. But if you have a commercial flagpole, it's gonna be simple. Like I said, you'd spin off the finial, set that right over the, the bolt that's on the top of your that screws the finial in, put that right back on, and you're going to be in business. Um, I think it's really cool light. Hopefully, I don't know because it's cloudy here today if it'll get enough charge to light up later. We'll see. Um, but I'll let you know what I think, and we'll go from there. If you're interested in something like this, I'll leave your information in the description. You can check it out. Vaughn has a lot of... of uh, lighting products for you to for you to look at and it's real simple they give you a little comes with a little card if you can even sign up to be a vaunt insider you get free stuff exclusive deals a lifetime warranty on your product again the directions to tell you how to do it they have a vaunt vip club that has samples testers discounts i think i'm going to find a way to put this solar glow back up there a i like the look of it i think the flagpole needs something on top that flat light on top i think just kind of makes it look somewhat unfinished but we'll see i mean i'll live with it for a couple days and go from there so that's it guys the vaunt solar light for flagpoles installation on my homemade flagpole do you guys celebrate flag day do you fly a flag at your house do you know the flag etiquette? I'll leave you a link for flag etiquette also in the description. Because if you're going to fly a flag, please do it right. Do it respectfully. Um, I could go on for hours about flag respect in my opinions, but that's not why you're here. So I'll get back to you. There'll be a full review on this on spec check, but I'll be back here to let you know about that and everything else if you like this kind of project guys please subscribe to homecraft chronicles if it's your first time here welcome subscribe for you too and make sure you hit the bell so whenever a new project or an update to an old project comes along you can check it out be the first ones to view it and let me know what you think if you like this video thumbs up would help me a lot i appreciate it um and that's it happy flag day guys I'll talk to you real soon.